Yeah, I'm Zach and I can recover. Actually, the funny is that the Muslim they think the, the Muslim they make videos on YouTube saying, Chris, brother and sisters, Christian Prince is lying. The one who is calling him is not Zachar Naik. His voice is the same, but this is not him. I mean, look how genius they are. I mean, have you ever heard of a phone saying, Tararam, Tararam? Let us say the voice is perfectly the same as Zachar Naik. I call Zachar Naik saying, Tararam, 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 Tararam. And the Muslim did not get it that this is a Christian prince making the voice of Zachar Naik. Intelligence is a gift. They don't have it. I call him by saying Tararim 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 Christian Prince. I told you, I did it once at the time. Don't call me now. Like just as I can act, what's wrong with you? First of all, I did not call you. I just said Tararim Tararim Christian Prince. If you say Tararim Tararim, my phone ring. Like, what the heck? I say Tararim Tararim, your phone ring. How that end up happen? I can explain to you. First of all, my phone is very active. And any telegram that I'm coming from you, they're going to believe it. Oh, what, what was that connect? This is very fast. Are you saying that the second I say telegram, telegram, your phone get activated and your phone ring? Exactly. I'm going to call the police for you. Why you want to call the police for me? My friend, I'm just calling the wrong number. I was calling the that. Why you answer? Christian Prince, first of all, I was listening to you. And you said I'm going to call Zach and Ike. And now I'm going to get it. Uh, Zach and Ike. Uh, okay, just hold on. Don't call the police. The Sharia police in YouTube, please let us solve the problem between me and you. Do you like Muta? Christian Prince, first of all, Muta is abrogated, and we are not only one to it. Like, what the heck? And now a Muslim, he will take this video and he will say, Christian Prince is faking Zach and Naik, this not just Zach and Naik. What I say, stupidity is amazing, I mean it. Oh boy. Do we have any Muslim? May they made the last call. How many of you did not join us in the other channel yet? I see only few of you weren't there. Only few of you, because now I see 410 likes. Let me refresh the page there for the video. There is 410 like. That means you guys are not clicking at the link and you are not joining us in the Bible channel. And by the way, I'm not really expecting too many people to join us. Because I know people, they are obsessed with the fighting, uh, argument, uh, a peaceful channel maybe is not what they like to see. You know, it might be boring for them because many here, they are coming just to watch a boxing show. Who is getting who busted? Not interested in learning. Anyway, those who they are interested is this this those who they, we care really for not those who they are interested in exciting boxing show show all right the link is in the front of you if you like to <clears throat> mr revelation is saying he challenged me you challenged me in what revelation if you make a sentence of a challenge Say the rest of it. You challenge me in what? In eating cucumber? Eating hamburger? You challenge me in what? Hmm. Do we have any Abdul? Anyone? I see there's many Muslims in the chat, but I don't know why they are not calling me. But do you see the Muslim, the one who called me, the last one, after all the game he play, then he have to finish it with the F word. Here you see that if Muhammad was a good prophet, why his followers who defend the faith they always speak and act the same the answer is very simple they are the same as Muhammad so why he will be 
why his mouth will be clean. I did not say to him any bad language. And he have to use a bad language. Why? Because he is, he feel humiliated with the stupidity of his God. And one of the things which is need a lot of patience in this garbage religion, that you have to repeat the question a thousand times. And still the Muslim claim that he did not get it. And then after he answer, he claimed that he did not say so. <laughs> I mean, it's recorded. He claimed that he did not say so. Did you order over eat? I don't know about that, but I can order Allah. Hmm? Why Allah? He says, uh, we, uh, we are going to have a wife. Uh, the guy, he came with the conclusion that maybe Allah speaking, uh, he's going to marry Mary or Muhammad or Jibreel. Uh, genius. Any Abdul? People in Indonesia, is that time is good for you? Is that time I chose is good for you? For the Bible study? Because I'm trying to make it good for everybody. Those who live in Europe, those who live in the USA, and those who live in Asia. <clears throat> I hope so. Suppose the Mahdi is alive for over 1000 years and Allah. Well, no, the Mahdi was exist in the, you know, you see the, the, the story of Al-Mahdi is nothing but a fabrication. And the Muslim, they went far with the stupidity of this story of Al-Mahdi to the point they claim that the grandfather of Al-Mahdi is Peter. Can you believe it? <laughs> Peter? Peter, how far stupidity can go? The grandfather of Al Mahdi is Peter. Fix that. And I, you know, I welcome the Muslims anytime if they want to speak about this guy Al Mahdi, so we can laugh. Al Mahdi, his, they don't even know the name. They don't agree about anything. The Muslims, they don't agree about anything. Who is the mother of Al Mahdi? Some they say Maryam. Her name is Maryam. Some they say her name is Nargis. Okay, how his mother, she gave birth to him? She gave birth to him from her thigh. Like, what's wrong with her private part? No, Al Mahdi is not like any other one. She gave birth to him from her thigh. Okay, how is going to be born from there? What do you mean? How we know that Al-Mahdi is Al-Mahdi? Okay, Al-Mahdi, if he fell down, he fell in his ass. Like, what the heck? And he don't fart when he fell. Uh -huh. This is how we know Al-Mahdi? <laughs> he don't fart? <laughs> And you will see, <coughs> sorry, you will see that Muhammad, he copied everything from Christianity. Uh, uh, how many, how many Imam they will come? Twelve. Is that Jesus have a twelve uh, disciple? Do you notice how they copy everything? Everything is a copy. Twelve Imams, twelve disciples of Jesus. Very simple. How many names Allah have? Ninety-nine names. What does that mean? The multiply of the, the, the age of Jesus, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, 3, 33, 99 names. Why Allah stop with 99? Can't he finish it with 100? Madness. We have a person, his name is Tenza. How are you, Mr. Tenza? Do you like to call me? Do you like to call Mr. Tenza? 
I see you are very active in the chat. Do you like? We can make you famous. Like one day you will tell your children I call a Christian prince and I defeated him miserably. Don't you want to do that? Actually, you can call me and then you can make a book. You said in Amazon the day I called Christian Prince. What do you think? You make a book. It's called the day I called Christian Prince and what happened? And you can imagine how many people read the book because everybody will see what you have, what, what you did. Muhammad, he can count only to 99. Well, I don't know about Muhammad counting, but obviously his God cannot, because if you go in the Quran, just to show you an example, you see, there's a counting skills Allah don't have, uh, obviously. Have you ever heard of, of, of somebody saying, three and their dog is number four, is the fourth? I never heard of somebody counting a dog as number four of, uh, for a human. In which language is that? And what is the purpose of this chapter here? Some they say uh, they are three and their dog is number four. Mm -hmm. And some they say they are four and their dog is number five. Mm -hmm. And some they say they are five and their dog is number six. Okay, so what is the number? Allah now is genius. He says, guessing at the unseen. What unseen? The story happened a long time ago. Okay, tell us what the answer. And then some they say they were seven and their dog is number eight. Okay, and what is the correct answer? Okay, Muhammad, tell them only Allah knows and few people. <laughs> this is what happened, the same as this coward who called me. He don't dare, you see, he learned that anything I say to him, if he say the answer, if he tell the answer, he will be hold with that answer. So he's trying to play games. How uh, Allah, he created Adam uh, uh, form. Well, is that a human? He will not answer. Okay, you say to me form. When Allah, he said, be, it was a form. Is that a human form? He will not answer. Is Jibreel, is, a, uh, uh, is uh, he's an angel, is he a spirit? He will not answer. So, they learn that whatever they say is going to be used against them. So they try to debate me without answering. What a nice debate. Here Muhammad went the same. They ask him, Hey Abdul, Muhammad, there's a story of the, I mean, even the story is called the seven sleepers. How stupid you are. It says the seven sleepers. So obviously there are seven. After all of this, Muhammad, he told them only Allah knows and few people. So, okay, and about you, do you know? And why Allah don't tell us? And what the point of this verse now? You see, if if somebody, uh, okay, some, I, I can say, the Hindu, they say they are four, the Buddhas, they say they are six, uh, the Tamil, they say they are 20, the Indonesian, they say they are seven, I know, and then I said to you the correct number, that makes sense. But now you are saying to us, some they say three in the world, and then they are there, there, there. And then you said, at the end of this drama, nobody knows what they, their number save Allah and a few people. So how nobody knows save Allah and a few people? Stupidity. Muhammad was trying to avoid to give the correct numbers because he himself, he do not know. He's not sure. The same one they asked Muhammad about the spirit. They asked him, what is the spirit? Muhammad, he went home. Two weeks, three weeks, four weeks. And then he come with the answer. Okay, what is the answer? He says, and they ask you about the spirit. See, uh, it is inspiration come from Allah and nobody knows uh, that they save Allah. Look, what the heck is that? And look at the translation, how funny it is. You change the translation, you, you find yourself, you have a new book. What is the answer? We are asking you, what is the spirit? When you say spirit, what does that mean? 
the odds concerning the spirit between two bracket the inspiration doesn't say anything about inspiration it says spirit say the spirit by the command of Allah of knowledge and you have little knowledge with Abdul this is what they are asking you because they have little knowledge and you are the prophet and you are talking to your God or God talking to you well here we go where is the answer until now we are waiting <laughs> have you ever heard of such an answer which is not an answer so this is an answer of somebody he don't want to answer he's avoiding the answer because if he say it people will laugh at him simple thing have you ever heard of a prophet who do not cannot explain what his spirit is imagine you ask jesus what is the spirit of jesus jesus he say give me two weeks and then after three weeks he come back he says only allah knows And you have little knowledge. This is a prophet of God. Uh, all right, look like we are out of Abdul, so we are going to exit Skype. Do, we will make the last call for Abdul. Any Abdul would like to call us? It's getting so long for me. Actually, I'm sitting for long. I'm trying to move my feet. It hurt. You know, when you stay for long, it's not healthy. You know, many hours you stay. And you know, remember, you know, you go drink, you go to the bathroom, you make tea, you make coffee, you eat. For me, I am the only one here staying for many hours dealing with this garbage. So for you, maybe you don't feel it like, you know, time go fast, you are relaxing in your bed, you know. For me, I'm stuck behind the computer to deal with the garbage of Muhammad. Any Muslim would like to call us? <clears throat> well, I don't know really the, or the, or, the origin of the uh, Seven Sleepers, but there is a story written by a Christian bishop about seven sleepers, seven Christians, who they believe, and because they were discriminated, the king, he chased them, and there's an angel, he protected them, so he opened his arms in front of the cave, and this is how he protected them from the army, the army ran away. And then they slept for 300 years something, and then uh, when they woke up, they found that the whole world around him became a Christian so that king died and they survived so what the what the story is it was like an inspiration of being a patient and you will be victorious but it's not a real story right it's not a real story Actually, even the Quran, the stupid Quran, proved to us that this is written by an idiot who do not know even how to read the story. As an example, when, when they are speaking about the dog, in the original story, there's no dog, this is an angel. So the word, the word is used in the original language is Kali Ahom, not Kelbahom. Kali Ahom is mean their provider, protector. That is an angel. So when you see in the Quran, in chapter 18, verse number 18, and then you will see, you will see them they are dreaming or sleeping, etc. And then you will see that their dog stretching his two arms. In translation, they say the dog is stretching forth his two foreleg. In Arabic, it doesn't say that. It says, Dira'i. And uh, just think about it. Have you ever heard of a dog can stop an army? Remember the story that there's a king chasing them to kill them. A king. So the dog, he opened his arms in front of the cave and the king and his army run. 
It's not a dog. It's an angel. Even in the Islamic interpretation, by the way, they say there was some. They say there's a there's a mistake in the inscribe. In it was not kalbahom. It was kaliahom. Because there's no army will run away from a dog. And same time, isn't it dog is haram? And isn't it Allah will take a, you know take a blessing from you deeds from your deed if you have a dog and he's najis? So why the dog is living there? Suddenly the dog became a hero in the Quran. Any Abdul? Anyone? <clears throat> Again, just to remind you, soon we are going to start our Bible study channel. You are free. It's free for everybody. You feel free to join us. By the way, even if you are a Muslim, you are, you know, you are welcome to join us. Uh, but we will not debate there. Here we debate. Here we can take calls. There we will not debate. We will not argue. There we just explain the verses, the Bible, because we want to have a peaceful time, quality time with our family. The Christian people. Do we have any Muslim would like to call me? Anyone? And you know, we invited Muslims many times, those especially who claim to be scholars. And still we invite them, but they were never there to call because they knew that this would be the end of their career. It's an end of a career of any Muslim. He claimed to be a scholar. Those who make, make, make Islam as a business for them. I saw an article of, a, of an Indonesian uh, Ustad. They called him themselves Ustad. He take $5,000 for a speech he make you know indonesia i mean indonesia is a is a really a nice country it's a beautiful country but people are poor nothing wrong with being poor right i mean god love the poor but look how those evil teachers they take advantage of those people to the point they will not make a speech unless you pay them a lot of money and the article was about this guy his name is uh, so so mad so mood some something you know some samsung samsung samud so smed is his, his name is so smed i'm not sure five thousand dollars to make a speech so you, the poor Indonesian, you spend your life to, to save $5,000. This guy, he made them in, in an hour. In within an hour. You see how great the business is? You don't have to pay me money to join me. It's for free. We are giving our books for Indonesian for free. Totally for free. My book to the Chinese for free. Albanian for free. Russian for free. This guy will not speak to you unless you pay him $5,000. I go to make a seminar, especially if it's in a poor country, you know, I pay for the hotel, I pay for the trip, I pay for the airplane, I pay for everything from my pocket. Now for sure I don't mind if I'm going to 
uh, or like let us say uh, a country which God bless them with money if they support my trip why not I mean but not to pay me as wages I don't want wages just pay for the ticket pay for the hotel I don't want to take wages do we have any Abdul <clears throat> Who is a Muslim from Indonesia is willing to do the following ex ex experiment? Send them an email about me. Actually, there's an article made about me in Indonesia. I don't know how many articles, but already they are asking the Indonesian Ustad, where are you? Why are nobody refuting this guy? Remember, Indonesia is maybe the biggest Islamic country in the world. So, when my books is translated to their language, that is a bigger threat. People will leave Islam left or right. Actually, which is very funny, the same video we are making today is going to be posted in Indonesian channel and you will see the same video will have thousands and thousands of viewers faster than my video. Can you believe it? You look at my videos, even the one who I keep like for maybe two weeks. So you will see the video I kept in my in my channel for two weeks, uh, maybe have 60,000. In the Indonesian channel, I have 150, 200,000 skyrocketing. Why? Because those Indonesians are very thirsty for the truth. If there's a way to attend your seminar well you know usually uh, people invite me to do seminars and I go so you can invite me and you will be there <laughs> but you know look what what now I, I notice that doing seminars is really costly uh, and it take time take uh, you know uh, uh, cost money uh, it's tiring and then uh, after you organize it still not too many you know here we go I go live on air I have thousand people listening they organize seminar you know it might be big like the one we have Texas in Texas last time the church was so huge I don't know I, I made a short video about about uh, about that seminar uh, but it can be after all the preparation they have like 300 400 500 people so it costs money it costs time you have to agree about it you have to to fly and you know it's a lot of crazy stuff especially now with corona well now we can do it in two minutes here we go i go live right oh i deleted some of the message by mistake sorry my friend I don't know how this is happening. If you deleted message, A, B, call, etc. Uh, okay. You guys ignore this guy. If you want to call me, he will call me. He don't want to call. You know what? You can. You cannot force him. He might go and you know tell his mom now that you are forcing him to call me. How he called? He do not know how he called. Okay. Uh, just leave. Take a hike. So, guys, it's saying you all this time. Call CP, and now after more than an hour, telling you to call CP, asking how to call. Shouldn't you say this question two seconds after they ask you? And isn't it people they keep posting that call debate TV in Skype? And didn't you notice that people are calling me in Skype? And now you're asking me how to call. Hmm. Camel urine, very powerful. Right? Yeah.
but you know I have I have to admit that going in seminar it's it's really fun uh, because you see a lot of things which is not the same as an internet you know so you will see people laughing you will see the reaction of people dying laughing literally and uh, one of the funny thing I, I encounter in doing a seminar was in the Philippines so the the minister of the church is a big huge church actually so now he will introduce me to his church so he went in the stage and he starts saying okay today our guest is not the same as guest we used to know he is the kind of a person he likes to say things as it is he don't sugarcoat things he will say your words and so this guy is preparing them for the disaster will be in this in the stage soon and he keep explaining and i was putting my head like my hand on, on my head like oh no god now people are going to run before we before we start you know because this guy he do not know what to say to them about what you will hear you know so uh, this uh, brother he have different way to approach and I was saying, give me the microphone, man. People will leave. If you keep talking like this, they will say, this guy, maybe he will shoot us. Or maybe what? what, what, what? So he started like explaining. He did not know what to say. He's trying to find words. And then I said, I think it's time for me to take the microphone. So I grabbed the microphone from him. And I said, this is what exactly what he meant. I'm not like others. He will go. I took the microphone from here and I kick him down. Go. So, you know, when you are doing a seminar in person, uh you will you will encounter a lot of funny stuff like there's two girls they came to me after the seminar because they did not say this is a christian prince in that seminar they told them a christian is, is a scholar in islam etc so the two girls they come to me and they are talking i was shaking hands after i finish and i noticed there's two girls they are looking and and one of them she said sir sir i have a question i said what I said are you christian prince <laughs> i said maybe she said see i told you this is him <laughs> it was very funny are you christian prince so they are arguing is that him not him is that him not him yeah one of them she won is that christian prince yeah uh, do we have any abdul Any Abdul? No Abdul. <coughs> no one? Maybe, maybe. Last call. Any Abdul? Yeah, actually, they saw my face and right away they left. This is telling you what happened after. Like, I told them, yeah, maybe, and then right away, like, they don't even say hello. Like, okay, bye-bye, bye-bye, you know, like, they run away, you know? They get terrified. And you know, the funny is, they told me you have, like, a short time. I forgot how long, so I can speak. And then when I finished, people, they start, no, we want him to stay, but we have an airplane to catch and we have to leave before, uh, because there's only one airplane, you know, I, I was, I, I, there's anyone here from the Philippines? Anyone here from the Philippines? Who is here from the Philippines? There's a city, it's called Cagayan de Aero, the Aero, I think, yeah. This is where this seminar was. Yeah. Any Abdul? And by the way, the city, this area is, is, is full of terrorists of ISIS. Right away when you leave the airport, you will see the flag of ISIS not even a hundred meters away from the airport. Honestly. You can ask any any uh, uh, Filipino. Right away. And actually, the, the, the airport itself have a mosque. The airport itself, the whole airport is controlled by Muslims. The employees, the security, and the 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 gate of the mosque. There's a the, the the gate of the airport. There's a mosque right away in it.
and you know, and those people who uh, invited me they have like you know they they were so worried and they, they some of them they armed themselves like security guards because they were they don't know what will happen you know this is an area full of muslims and there's muslims who attend the, the seminar and there was one of them she was a female and supposedly she is a princess you know the muslims they have like a used they used to have a sultan in the old days so she is from the family of that sultan and she became a christian yeah <clears throat> any abdul And actually, they told me don't go there because it's a very risky area. This is the same same area. You remember the city of Marawi, the city of Marawi, where uh, the ISIS they took over the city. I don't know if any of you knows what I'm talking about. Let me exit Skype because obviously no Muslim calling. Marawi city. So they attacked the city and they occupied the whole city actually. And if you look, even they have kids with guns, you know? Yeah. They start killing Christians, slaughtering priests, uh, you know, practicing the teaching of Allah. Well, this is not the fault of Ilhan Omar about the Islamophobia bill. This is the stupid Democrat. Don't blame the, the Muslim woman. She is a Muslim woman. But in the same time, what this is Islamophobia International mean? It's stupid, you know, because they cannot, you can't force an American not to say his word. Eh, here we go, I'm here, I'm in America. And we don't have Islamophobia, it is Muslims who have a phobia. Yeah, actually, they told me don't go there because this is very, very, very risky area. I said, I will go. Everybody says to me, don't go, man. You have no idea. I said, I have idea. I'm coming from the least. So I went there. We have, you know, the, the church have a stadium, basketball stadium. This is where I did my seminar, actually. It was the, the, the playground. So there's a stadium seats and all the ground in the... In the uh, in the stadium uh, full of chairs and the doors are open which means Muslims can come Christians can come everybody can you know can join and not only that they wanted me to not to stay long because they were afraid that the news would spread in the city and then something bad can happen but people refused that I will should leave on time so we did not leave on time we left second day Uh, take down the picture why it hurt right it hurt to see the truth yeah this is the uh, religion of peace and you know and now they are enjoying the versions actually you know this religion is really stupid so when you take you when you take over a town and do you think really the army of the Philippines will let you take over the town? I mean, can you, do you think really that let's say you have a 500 fighters, 1,000 fighters, 10,000 fighters, do you think really you can overcome an army of a country like the Philippines? I mean, Filipinos, if they throw balut at you, they will kill you. Just by using balut. So it was a stupid move. And actually, uh, you know, the, because of the stupid move, the Filipinos were able to clean their land from those criminals. And now they are dead. Wonderful. 
otherwise they will be hiding between the population making bombs from time to time but now the, the, you know the army the filipino army send them free shipping and handing to allah and now they are busy doing boom boom with the versions you know? I feel normal. Actually, people they die laughing, you know. Uh, in that day, I have a, uh, you know, like, uh, we played some videos. Usually, I use those videos just to show them to help me. So, I was using a video about the description of heaven, paradise. I play it here many times before, especially in file talk. So, I use it in, uh, in uh, I use it there. And people they were dying laughing, you know. <clears throat> <clears throat> but you know remember always the Muslim they claim victory no matter what what happened so the American army controlled their the Afghanistan for 20 years and when the American army decide to leave not the Afghani army or uh, uh, Taliban kicked them they decide to leave they claim victory <laughs> but the guys this is a Trump he announced in the day of etc a year from now we will leave it's Trump. So they told you in advance we are leaving. It's not you who kicked them. During that time, not even a single soldier was killed. 2,000 American soldiers only defeating the whole country of Afghanistan. 2,000. This is why many, they wrote an article saying, can't Biden leave 2,000 or 2,500 soldiers only? How in the world 2,500 soldiers or 2,000 soldiers can control an, uh, such a country? I mean, how brave those Taliban are. Do you see it? Read. Here we go. Why did not Biden leave 2,500 soldiers? It's not nothing. It's just 2,500 soldiers controlling the whole country. So Taliban, Taliban, they were sitting like puppies for the last 20 years because there's 2,500 soldiers not 250 2500 american soldier you see it so all what they need the american to keep uh, afghanistan under their control just keep 2500 soldiers taking vacation because nobody even attacking them and then after they leave, and they are the one who said we will leave a long time ago, the Muslim, they claim that we have victory over the American. We kick them out. <laughs> we kick them out. Yeah. But we have to agree that this Biden is a stupid. I mean, if you want to withdraw, no problem, but not the way he did it. But, you know, what you can say, this is, uh, this is Joe Biden. A certified idiot. <clears throat> Do we have any Abdul? Actually, we closed uh, Skype already, so there's no point of saying any Abdul. So I think we have a good time together. Uh, Do you want me guys to come live tomorrow? What do you think? I know that now it's a, like uh, it's a, the Christmas is coming and you guys will be busy with your family, having a good time. I don't want to take you from your children's, your your family, you know, enjoy your time with your beloved one. Al Mas Al Masid means the crystal. What Masid? You mean the Messiah? 
Messiah, not Masid. Not Masid, Messiah. When I will come to Indonesia, okay, well, you can imagine how many Indonesians will be waiting for me in the airport if I go to Indonesia, especially from the Islamic parties. Man. <laughs> Our friend here is asking me to come to Indonesia. What do you think really will happen if I go to Indonesia? What do you expect? I mean, what kind of reception I will have? How many million Indonesian they will be waiting for me in the airport? Hmm? How many terrorists? You can use your imagination. Christian Prince is coming. Aman Rabbi Aman. Christian Prince is coming to Indonesia. Takbir. For sure the government will not dare to touch me because I'm an American citizen. But people, they can. I mean, then they say to them, what we can do? The crowd did it. It's not us, you know. The crowd, but the government, they would not dare. If I go to Saudi Arabia, do you think the government would dare to arrest me? They will not dare. They will never dare. But they can fabricate for you an accusation to, to arrest you, not because if you speak against Islam, uh, they can say we found the drugs in his uh, bags, you know? They can frame you to make another excuse, so it have nothing to do with him being speaking against Islam, right? You go to the airport, they are in charge of the airport. Look at this picture. You know, when I look at this picture first, I thought those are hats. But look like the, the camera is not able to take the, the movement, so they look really weird. Look at this. Pagan religion. This is exactly what Islam wants from you. Keep your head down. Don't look up, don't see. For the second you will see, you will leave this cult. Right? No, even their police, they will not dare to touch me. But uh, uh, but what they will do, uh, they can fabricate something. They can send the women, accuse you that they did something to her. I mean, it's their country. Right? It's their country. They can fabricate anything. So the, the government, they will never make a, the reason of arrest because he did insult the prophet when he was in America. They have to come with something better. So they will accuse you even you are saying drugs or you assault uh, Muslim women or you rape somebody, you know, they will fabricate anything. Yeah. <clears throat> And then, you know, at the same time, why I want to go to Indonesia anyway? I'm going to Indonesia every day without going there. Here we go. Many Indonesian are here. And actually, number one people who watch my videos, I believe, they are Indonesian. Because if you see the most big view channels for my videos, they are Indonesian. There are some they pass the, the millions of of, uh, of a view. They are just Indonesian channels, which means everybody there who watch those videos are just Indonesian. Will you come to India? You know, I love to travel, really. But you see, you have a lot of enemies, my friend, and those enemies are cowards. Let me turn the light on because it became dark from a long time. I cannot see anything no more. Give me a second. <clears throat> I 
when you have when you have a lot of enemies then you better be smart right it's not it's not smart to go to countries and tell people I might go to India but I will not tell I'm going to India you know what I mean otherwise the enemies will be waiting for you preparing for you Tell us about Muhammad being raped by his cousins. Well, the story says when they, when the cousin of Muhammad they came to meet him, uh, he refused to meet them, and he says, "Amma ibn Ammi faqad ardi," which is a meaning of uh, sexual, uh, you know, um, uh, sexual assault. Usually, it's about rape. That's all what it says. But can he, can I talk to you, please? You are here, my friend. Talk to me. Who's holding you? Right? Yeah, I will go to India, and right away I go to the airport, and then the police, he give me, he says, give me your passport. I said to him, listen to me. I can give you my passport. First of all, I'm very well known. My name is Dakin Naik. And I wanted in India. Like, what the heck? They will arrest me right away. They will say, look, he have the same voice, but he don't have the same look. That's, you know, Zachary Naik is more handsome. Right? <clears throat> you see, I just said, when we speak about in, in the when we will teach about the Bible, will not mention anything about the Quran. So avoid, please, mention anything to do with Islam when we go in the other channel. That will be a Bible only, specifically in the four Gospels. All right. So don't open a topic. Here we go. I'm here. This channel is for Islam. We we'll talk about Islam. Here we are not talking about the Bible. There we will be talking about the Bible. As simple as that. All right. Now, how many of you will download this video? It's long, but you can cut it pieces, especially the Muslims calling me, right? Right? We have few Muslims who called us, and I believe those can be very useful for anyone who want to learn about the stupidity of Islam and how Muslims desperately try to defend, but always they fail. Each one of those who do, they called us today, not only they failed to defend their religion, they were so confused, very silly, and uh, uh, the end of the conversation is a disaster. I mean, have you ever heard of a religion that didn't know how their God created Adam? He said be and he was. Was he? Did he say really be and he was? Or this is a fabrication, a fiction? It's an error. It's a lie. Nowhere in the Quran, Allah, He says, being it was. I mean, as in a creation, He said that, yes. But as a creation, Allah created Adam step by step. Allah, He breathed into Mary, private part. The lie, they say, sleeves. Where is the word sleeves? They are trying to fix it. How in the world is God? He's saying he brew into her private part. <laughs> the vagina blower. Uh... Okay, I just found a, a picture. <clears throat> you will notice how even Muslims, when they build mosque, they spend too much money in their mosque. Like this is a country, Indonesia, you know? It's a poor country. And when I say poor, remember, I'm not really putting the people down. Many countries used to be poor one day, and they flourish today. 
and we pray that Indonesian including Muslims will flourish but the question is when you spend too much money in building a mosque and people cannot even find a living what is attaining you you see I am against building fancy churches because Jesus never built one why we need to make it fancy cost a lot of money why a church fancy church can be uh, the same money can build a thousand church instead of one why they have to be fancy why they have to be marble why they have to have art this is uh, this is just a king behavior as you know they because they don't want to go to a church is a humble church so they want to go to a church is look majestic right uh, but this is not what God you know he came for church is not a building church is us but those who build fantastic churches let's say as a building cost a lot of money at least they are rich they have a lot of money they don't know what to do with it Muslim countries they have no money especially in Indonesia can you elaborate in Ismailism Ishmaelism you mean Ishmael is that what you mean Ishmael well you know when people they say uh, the children of Ishmael, Ishmael uh, and usually even Christians they try to put Muslims under that frame but reality most of Muslims are not even Arab as you see Indonesia is the biggest Muslim country and secondly uh, Ishmael have nothing to do with the Arab and Arab is not even an ethnic Arab is a word mean desert desert it's not an ethnic so the Arabian is people of the desert as simple as that so if you are a person who live in the desert you are Arabian and this is an Aramaic word so like Aram Aram is a word mean those who live in high hills high mountains or let us say hills Arab is a word used to describe people who don't have houses people who live as Bedouin people who they are in the desert and people who don't even take a shower let us say it's a savage describing savage people this is what Arab mean so Arab have nothing to do with ethnic never was this is why if you go and look at those who call themselves Arab you will see somebody is white somebody he look uh, different I mean all, every one of them look different every country look different so how they are Arab because simply none of them is really an ethnic group as as a nation those and today uh, especially especially these days now there's many countries that try to join the European uh, they say sorry the, the Arab Union it's called a Jamia al Arabiya so they can get benefit of uh, free mortgage etc from the rich countries like Emirat, Saudi Arabia so as an example suddenly Somalia became an Arab country but Somalian are you know are African with dark skin Arab or not and African they live in Africa Egypt suddenly it became an Arab country but this is this is Africa Arab are not from there uh, uh, Syria Syria are Aramaic people who they are very white and they are blonde and they have blue eyes and green eyes uh, uh, Lebanese, uh, Jordanian, I mean everybody so you will see uh, Iraq, Iraq is the land of the Babylon, the Assyrian, the Chaldean you know so the word Arab now became very wide however the word Arab in the language is those who live in the desert only you are not an Arab, are you an Israeli? no I'm not an Israeli however just to show you how ignorant you are uh, I want to ask you in front of everybody. I will make you an admin if you can tell me what Israeli mean from the Quran. Is that fair, guys? Just to show you that those people, they are Muslims, they don't know what they are talking about.
What does Rayri mean? I'm waiting. I will give you 10 hours. Just to show you that this religion makes you stupid. Muhammad Osman, he's saying, Christian prince, not Arab. You are Israeli? What does Israeli mean? Are you searching Google? He's searching Google trying to find the answer because the answer is not there. I will give you a million year to show me from the Quran what Israeli mean because your stupid Quran keeps saying children of Israel, children of Israel, Israeli, what does that mean? Now he's scratching his ass. He's saying to himself, what I did to myself, I should not pause this thing. Can you take it down? He's a troll? Well, he trolled, he trolled himself. We laugh at him anyway. I sound like a Jew. Ah, yeah. Khabibi, Khabibi, Khabibi Muhammad, Khabibi. Khabibi Muhammad. Allah give you 50 prayer, Khabibi? 50 prayer, Khabibi? How you can pray 50 prayer, 50 times, Khabibi? So, uh, this is the story of Musa and Muhammad. The Jewish guy, Musa, he, he fixed the stupid Allah order to, to pray 50 prayer. Muhammad, he insists that uh, Musa, as a Jew, he is the, he, is, he do what the Jews do. What the Jews do, they do negotiate. They do bargain. 50 prayer? No way. Khabibi, go back to Allah and ask him for discount, Khabibi. Muhammad, you go back to Muhammad is like a toy, you know? Musa, he spank him in his ass, he send him back to Allah. Okay, go, Muhammad, go. Ask Allah to give you discount. Muhammad, you go to Allah. Okay, Muhammad, Khabibi, what Allah told you? Uh, he told me uh, to play 40 uh, prayer. Khabibi, Muhammad. Khabibi, Muhammad. 40 prayer, Khabibi, Muhammad. You people cannot do that, Habib Muhammad. Let me turn your back, turn your back. Okay, boom, spank him in his ass. Now go back to Allah Habibi and ask him for more discount. You know, that's what the Jews do. I mean, he's a Jew, but you can say, you can't complain. So Muhammad, he says, okay, and he listened. Muhammad, he listened because he knew that the Jews are smart. It's not, they are not dumb like the Arab. So, Habibi, Habibi, okay, Muhammad, you go back to Allah, you tell, Allah, uh, the Jewish guy, Moshe, Moshe, he told me uh, to uh, give me discount. Allah, he shake his head, he says, oh, the Jews, you know, they are screwing with me. Oh, this guy is just doing what they say. Okay, Muhammad, go and uh, I will give you 35 prayer. Muhammad, he go back. Musa is waiting for him. Like, Musa have nothing to do in life. I mean, look, this guy is taking vacation just for Muhammad. He's waiting. Hey, Muhammad, he came. Hey, Musa, Khabibi, Muhammad, what did you give me? What, what he told you? Muhammad, he said, Allah, he told me to play 35 uh, time prayer. Hey, 35, Musa, he said, Muhammad, Habibi, 35 prayer. You can't even go to the bathroom, Muhammad. How you can pray 35 time prayer in, 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 in 16 hours, Habibi? You cannot do it. This is too much, Habibi. You need 20 minutes to do the evolution alone for each time. So you're a sort of time, Habibi. Go back to Allah, turn your back, turn back, and you know, he hit him in his ass. He sent him back to Allah. Muhammad, he go back to Allah. Allah, uh, Allah, he's like, what the heck? He keep coming. Uh, Muhammad, why you are here? Uh, Musa, uh, the Jewish guy, he told me this is impossible 35 times. Okay, okay, 30 times. Eh, Muhammad, you go back to Moshe. So, to make the story short, Muhammad, he go, keep going backward, forward like a yo-yo. You know the yo-yo? Yo, yo, yo. Who is playing him? Moshe, the Jewish guy. And then from 50 to 5. So you Muslim, you should be really grateful for the Jews. If not the Jews, you will pray in 50 times a day. How you can do that? I mean, was your God Allah stupid when he says 50 prayer? He replied to me, where he said, where he reply? I didn't see the reply. Let me go back in the chat. He replied. I didn't see a reply. Yeah, I know. 
No, Muhammad never met Allah too. This is, this is the other stupid story because Muhammad never saw Allah, never even spoke to Allah. So how he, you know, he went and he gave him 50 prayer, there's no details. There's some hadith that Allah told him, but they don't say to you how he told him, you know. Um, again, just to re remind you, we are going to be in other uh, in other page, another channel in YouTube. That channel is going to be to study the Bible, and our topic will be the Christmas, and we will celebrate the Christmas at the same time, you know, with the family. Because I know there's many of you here; they consider me as their own family, and the same for me. And there's many they hate me, which is it's okay. I mean, this is uh, this is part of what we do, you know. People will hate you for my name. I understand. I'm not surprised. But you know, we have to we have to. Uh, uh, to remember that God is a joy and his joy is the best and any joy is a clean from any faith is a great joy right so I really I want to finish with this and we will we will be soon live again maybe tomorrow maybe the day after we will see but for sure if I don't see you until the time come be sure to subscribe to that channel because this is where I will be in the Christmas night. I always celebrate my Christmas with the Christians. I do my mission. I don't go really out. New Year, Christmas Day, it doesn't matter. I'm not a person who like, uh, uh, you know, uh, Christmas for me is not a party. Christmas for me is a great day for the Lord. And that day can be celebrated best by saving souls and bring them to Christ. Uh, it's not about food. It's not about uh, anything else. Uh, for sure, all of us, we enjoy food. All of us, we enjoy uh, music. We enjoy uh, uh, to have a good time with family. That's wonderful. But there is a special place will unite us all. That is the place of Christ. So would Christ love if all of us, we throw our hatred and I say to you, if you have a family, if you are angry from your wife, if your wife she is, if you are angry from your husband, I take, I ask you, take advantage of such a blessed day to forgive and to love your husband and to love your wife and have a great time and try to start a fresh start with your life. For sure, not it's not possible for some people, but. I think there's many people they are uh, uh, suffering in their life as married couple and they are suffering from things that's not really worth to suffer from. Uh, so bring the Lord to your life to fix the cracks in your relationship between you and your husband, you and your wife. Try to bring Christ to your life so that can fix your life and make it really worthy. Because nothing can make it worthy except the Lord himself being part of it. A man, he cannot love his wife unless he know what love means. Same for a woman, she cannot love her husband unless she know what love means. And there's no love better than the love of the Lord who gave and he was not waiting for a return. The problem of all of us that when we love, we wait for a turn. You say to yourself, look what I did. I served this man for many years. Look what he is doing to me. Or I say, I, I was so good to this woman for many years and look what she is doing to me. So because we have always expectation, our love was not real. Our love was a requirement for a return. So I provide love so I can receive love. That is a wrong love. A person who follow Christ, he will be like the shining sun. He provide warm to the one who is called, not because he's returning, he's waiting for the favor to be returned, 
but because he is doing the nature of the sun. This is what the sun do. The sun don't ask who is going to make me, give me my light back, to pay me back. If you cannot reach that point, then you don't understand what love is. And this is the same when we study the gospel. We will learn how we can live happy with our family. Uh, we, we will, I will do my best to make the Bible as a guideline for us, for all the problems we have in our life. And me, myself, I have a problem like you. Life, sometimes you feel like life forsaking you, you know. Uh, it, it, life is not fair. As an example, uh, YouTube is all over me. They are not being fair to me. I do nothing, you know, I just debate Muslims. But they try their best to take down my channels. They strip from my donation. Everybody can collect donation. I cannot, you know, why? Because they are desperate trying to stop me. And we take his channel down, he open a new channel. So life is not fair, but is not an excuse for you to be unfair for others and to forget, to forget that God is the only one is fair if you are expecting fairness and justice from a human being that's mean you do not understand yet what a human being do a human being was not even fair to himself this is what adam he did and this is what we do to ourselves so i hope that's uh, uh, our uh, channel about the gospel will be a blessing for us and uh, let me put it in the channel there so those people who they are uh, wondering where we will be again the first topic will be is celebrating uh, christmas is biblical and we will explain why it's biblical so for sure it's biblical and again it's going to be in the channel it's called arab for christ as you see in the screen arab for christ and by the way in the same channel we have many courses to teach you how to speak arabic for free to learn how to write how to read how to speak Arabic, all right? So already we have, uh, when you look at the, at the like here, you will see 492 people. So imagine thousands came here today and left. Only 492 people, they took an action to go and to give it a like. So I'm not expecting too many people to, to join, but for me, 12 people is too many because my Lord, the Messiah, he have a 12 disciple. Right? And with the 12, he changed the world. The world did not change him. Neither changed him. They changed the world. So those numbers really will not mean much. But however, because we care for saving as many as we can, we are asking to invite more and more so more people will learn. And at the same time, we want to you know, share with you how you can really uh, explain the Bible, not in a traditional way. You know, I, I don't want to do anything really traditional. I would do it in a totally different way. And if I find a way, like somebody, he can take calls first in Skype to be sure that those are not one of those mad you know crazy ones trying to disturb our program then i can take calls from females live on air asking questions or maybe you can call me in skype right now and leave a question offline and i play your voice i think this will be a good idea you have a three four days from now to call and leave your question even if you are a female because in this way a, 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 a mad person who is trying to disturb our uh, peaceful time studying the Bible will not be able to intervene because we will listen to the message before we play it and if it is not appropriate, it's not fit, we will not play it. Right? I think that will work. We will see. yeah so i want to say thank you guys for being here and uh i wish you a great time with the christ and remember merry christmas always is a is a word is a celebration about christ mass christ service is not a party 
if you are a person who do parties and drinking you are not celebrating Christmas especially those crazy parties in bars and nightclubs those are not parties those those are places of uh, you know you you are serving everything wrong not serving something good so Christmas is a Christ mass Christ service Christ is Lord and we are here to service the Lord by serving each other so it's not a party it's not a food it's not even a gift however all of those things can present for us good things gift God is a gift he gave himself as a gift the red color is exists for a reason because Jesus he gave his blood for us the gift you give to your children that is a gift of love you give it to them and you know that maybe one day they will ignore you maybe one day they will leave you maybe one day they will throw you in the nursing home maybe they will not even take care to, to pay electric bill one day so you spend your life spending money on them and then suddenly your child he dump you still you do it why because the love of a Christ is inside you so Christmas is a wonderful time and really I wish you all a great and Merry Christmas and we will be again in a Christmas evening together in the other channel which we mentioned to you if you like to join us so I want to say thank you guys for being here I'm not going to play any music to end my uh, my uh, uh, my talk uh, I prefer to leave it with the Christ and his uh, his words is the best for us to listen to and suddenly you know uh, 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 like you uh, when you when you join the Christmas day or the Christmas time you feel different from all the time of the year it's really a special place it reminds you of your childhood when you were a baby when you were a child when you were six years old ten years old the Christmas day is an amazing time it is it is a memory it is uh, it is a dream of a child who grow became adult who want to have peace who want to see the world beautiful white snow you know you know which mean we are dreaming about a, a, a amazing world around us there's no crimes there's no criminals there's no child molesters like muhammad there's no killing there's no thieves there's no rapist this is what christ or christmas is what we love about it it is a day when a human being try to be clean so can you try to be clean the Lord he says be holy like your father it's a project to work in try to be holy and not to be filthy in the Christmas time so don't get a drunk and don't even drink why do you want to drink what is drinking is about have nothing to do with the cross at Christmas so don't be crazy don't be a fool don't be a, a, a mad person and don't break God, uh, let us say, God teaching to you, God guideline, God wisdom given to you. Be holy like your father and celebrate holiday. That's why it's called holiday, for it should be holy. Thank you, and God bless you. And until we see you soon again, Christ is Lord, and Islam is a fraud, and we prove it every day. Take care.